came to Purdue, uh, decided that he wanted to coach after graduating, but wasn't sure what until he coached middle school at Tecumseh with uh, Tim Fogarty. And after that, it was all decided, his future and where we bring him now. He moved up the ranks until 2013 when he was an easy choice to succeed future Hall of Fame coach Marshall Overly uh, here at West Lafayette. Um, he right away received the Colts Coach of the Week after going 5-0. and um, Coach Overly, when expressing his uh, desire to have this young man as our coach, uh, said that he was both calm and firm with the young men that he would be coaching. Remember, he works daily with 15 through 18 year old boys. So uh, those two traits are absolutely necessary. Uh, he's currently 38 and nine, is according to uh, John Harrell's Indiana football. Uh, he is already in his fourth year, won two sectional championships, two regional championships, uh, a semi-state and last year brought West Lafayette to the precipice of what would have been a, uh, a state championship playing for the title down in Indianapolis. So, uh, Coach, we're very, very honored to have you to spend a few minutes with us today talking about your team and uh, what you think is going to happen uh, the rest of the season. Thank you, Max. Uh, thank you everyone for allowing me to speak and being so welcoming. Uh, tough act to follow with everyone that's been up here uh, so far. I'm just going to talk briefly about our football team and, and kind of some of the things we do at West Lafayette. Um, and I welcome any questions that you might have. Uh, otherwise, if no one asks questions, you won't see me very long. It'll be really short. So either way is fine. Uh, so coming into this year, uh, Max mentioned we went to the state championship last season. Uh, had a great senior class, uh, many contributors, underclassmen. Uh, we were 13-2 and two last season, uh, both close losses. Uh, the state championship, we were actually tied at seven going into half. Um, and those of you or, or many people I, I talked to said that they watched it on TV, and I said, well, hopefully you only watched it until halftime because the second half just wasn't very good. Um, but after that, uh, we had six returning starters on offense and three returning starters on defense coming back this season. So we knew in the summer, um, you know, the, the cupboard wasn't completely bare, completely empty. Uh, we had some returners. Um, and, and the guys now, uh, back when I was in high school and, and I played high school sports, I don't, I'm not sure if you weren't allowed um, to have as much contact with the coaches or, or that just wasn't what was done. But I didn't, in my four years of high school, I didn't work as hard or none of my teammates worked as hard as our guys now do in probably one month in the summer. It, it's, it's amazing to see what these guys do and what they put into becoming better at whatever sport they choose. Uh, they really, really, really work hard in the summer um, and, and make their bodies uh, ready for the season, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, um, whatever sport it is, that they work hard at it. Our kids at West Lafayette High School are very self-motivated. Uh, they want to be the best that they can be at, at whatever it is they do, and it starts in the classroom. Um, our kids are, are great student athletes. Uh, it's really funny. I, I have uh, friends from all over the coaching world and all over the state, and I just, um, you know, we, we talk back and forth, and, and every year I, I run into a coach who so-and-so got suspended, he can't play, so-and-so got in trouble, we're missing three kids, they got kicked out of school. I, I've never had that happen since I've been at West Lafayette. And I joke that the things we run into at West Lafayette, which is actually a good problem, we, uh, just last week we had four kids. Coach, we're going to be 15 minutes late for practice tonight because we have a, a dress rehearsal for our band concert. And, and I think that's awesome. Um, you know, some coaches are like, what? You, they don't even believe that a kid playing football could be in the band or the orchestra or whatever. We have multiple kids that that happens to. Um, you know, we've had choir performances that, that have gone over and, and kids have missed football practice for. Uh, next week we have a big uh, field trip from the uh, uh, Earth and Space Science class. Uh, they're going down and they're going to be in a cave all day, uh, so they'll miss practice that day. And, and it's just kind of the way we do things at West Lafayette, and it's fine. We, you know, we want them to be great in the classroom, and the experiences they get in the classroom are, are just phenomenal. Um, so that, that's no problem, and it's, it's not a problem for us. It's, it's just a unique situation. Uh, all our kids are very involved in numerous things. They aren't your typical football only guys, uh, they play other sports, they're involved in school, um, they get great grades, they're just, they're great kids, they're easy to work with. Uh, so our success 
you know, Max listed uh, my personal record and all those things that, and I didn't even know that record. But the the thing that that makes us have a quality football program and a quality school are are the kids themselves, their parents, and the strong community support that we have. If we didn't have that, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be what it is right now. And I absolutely love my job. I love going to school every day. I teach PE and I teach health and I coach football. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that, and, and the reason why it's so good is those things I listed. Um, it, it's a very fun place to be. So back to our season. Uh, so far this year, we're 6-2, and two, um, two very, very close losses. We lost in double overtime to McCutcheon, um, and we lost by three points in the last 30 seconds to Central Catholic. So we think we're a pretty good football team. Um, however, if you look at it on paper, geez, we might be the third or fourth best team in the county. I don't believe that, though. Uh, two close losses. Uh, we are getting ready to go into the playoffs. We've got a conference game uh, tomorrow night at Northwestern, uh, and then we start the sectional the week after that at home against Tipton. Kind of the way we do things and, and the way we set our goals um, are all about the postseason. In Indiana, which I think is unique, uh, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. A team could go 0-9 in the regular season. They would still make the playoffs and it's just random draw. It's ping pong balls out of a hopper where you go in the sectional. So you don't get any better seed or you don't get extra home games if you win all your regular season games. So what we try to do at West Lafayette, we schedule um, the absolute most difficult schedule we can in the regular season, and we try to prepare our kids and we try to peak at the end of October and into November so we're ready to go for the playoffs because that's the ultimate goal for us. That's what we think matters the most um, in our locker room everything we keep track of. We don't keep track of any individual awards. We don't keep track of any conference awards. We don't keep track of anything in the regular season. We have a plaque that says sectional championships, regional championships, semi-state championships, and state championships. That's the only thing we focus on. And it's all a build up, up to that point. Um, and we hope we have them prepared and we hope the kids are prepared to make a, a strong run in the playoffs this year. So that's pretty much how we do things and, and how blessed we are to have the kids we do at West Lafayette High School. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, some things I jotted down that are kind of hot topics in football right now, um, certainly the safety and the concussion issue, uh, football has come a long way in regards with that. Um, so if anybody has any questions about something like that, or if anybody, I love to talk football. I could actually stay here for hours and talk football. If anybody wants to talk scheme, X's and O's, plays, offense, defense, uh, anything like that, I'd be happy to open it up and answer any questions anyone has. I saw one back there. How does it feel after coaching a game to sit down in a TV studio and talk about it? And when do you learn if you're going to be doing that? Good question. So the Friday night frenzy every once in a while. Um, we'll, we, we learn about 4.30 that day, usually. Um, ask, hey, coach, uh, could you make it on the frenzy tonight? And obviously, we, we really appreciate their support, so I'll always do that for them. Um, sometimes it's, Coach, if you guys win tonight, would you mind coming on the frenzy? I think they, they don't want to get in a situation where the coach is upset about a loss and, and have them on TV. So um, the times I've been on there, um, the, especially the first few times, it, it is kind of nerve-wracking. I'm kind of asking Rob or whoever it is talking. I'm saying, hey, hey, what are you going to ask me? I kind of want to be prepared because you're on there live. Um, and he doesn't usually tell me. In fact, it's, it almost feels like he doesn't know. He just kind of, uh, you know, goes with the flow. And it's not too bad. You're just kind of talking football there. Um, it, I don't know if this is a secret I'm giving out or not, but something that the, the funniest thing for me that I noticed when I went there was, uh, you know, they wear their sport jackets and suit jackets. Well, they've got shorts on underneath the table. You guys can't see that. And I just, they just looked really weird to me in the hallway when he met me and he's got this nice looking suit jacket on and, and he's wearing shorts. But Whatever, we went in the back and it worked fine. Yes? Can you talk about some of your key players or kids that are leading the, the team? Sure. Um, yep, absolutely. We, we've got, uh, you know, football is a sport where you need a, a ton of, of key players. Um, if you just have one or two guys that are your guys, your, your team's probably not going to be very successful. So we have a bunch. Um, some of the guys I'll talk about are our seniors, uh, starting with our captains. Um, Jonah Williams is a starting captain. Hit. Uh, some of you may remember his, his father, Calvin Williams, uh, star wide receiver at Purdue. 
Um, played in the NFL for 10 or 11 years with the Eagles and the Ravens. Um, he's uh, an associate athletic director here at Purdue, and his son Jonah is a senior on our team. He's one of few kids that play both offense and defense for us. Um, he is a good, good-looking kid. He's one of those guys that, uh, you know, if, if you want to intimidate a team when you're on the road, you send him off the bus first, and they kind of look at him and say, whoa, I hope everybody doesn't look like that because he looks like a football player. Uh, so he's done great for us. Uh, Matt Marley. Um, Matt Marley is a, a tremendous hard worker. He's a, a 4.0 kid. He'll be our valedictorian this year. Um, uh, really sad news on Matt. He broke his collarbone Friday night. He's going to be out the rest of the season. He had surgery Saturday morning. He, he's actually bookended his career with broken collarbones, one on this side and one on this side now. Uh, his freshman year in the scrimmage, we have a, an organized scrimmage at, at Harrison, and he caught a diving catch in the back of the end zone, and the ref threw his arms up, and, and he didn't get up, so we were kind of looking, and we went down, and he had broken his collarbone, had to have a titanium plate in it, and then just last Friday night, um, same kind of deal. A pass went over his head and he dove for it, came down, just uh, kind of a freak injury, and he did the other side. So he's got two titanium plates, both sides, screws through them. Um, he'll be done, but he's such a good leader. He's one of our captains. He'll continue uh, to help us from the sidelines. Uh, we've got a lot of young kids that play, and, and he'll be a, a very comforting source for them, um, and he'll help us out as we move through the playoffs. The last one uh, I talk about is our quarterback. Uh, he probably gets the most press out of everyone, and he kind of shies away from that. But when you put up the numbers that, that Mikey Kidwell puts up, it's hard to shy away from that. He's uh, I don't really keep track of records and things like that, but we have a, we have a football historian. I know, uh, Mr. Curtis, you know John Speaker. Uh, he's, he's got all our records and all our record books. And Mikey Kidwell... Uh, he started his sophomore and his junior year for us at quarterback. Before he took a snap his senior year as quarterback, he owned every, not, not just most, he owned every single quarterbacking record, single, season, game, and career before he took a snap his senior year. Um, he's played eight games this year, and he is the, the leading passer in the state. At one point, he was the leading passer in the nation. Um, so I don't know where those numbers are, but... Whoever follows him up in the years to come, those are going to be very, very difficult records to break. So those are some of our key guys. Does he have a college up in Corvettimus? I don't know how you pronounce his name. Yeah, yep, I'll get to... He's been recruited? Yes. Uh, somebody asked about Mikey's college choices. Um, if I were a college recruiter, I would be all over Mikey. Uh, he's five foot nine. So people see quarterback in five foot nine, and they're not quick to jump on, but he's going to go somewhere, and wherever he goes, he's going to be very successful, whoever takes a chance on a, on a shorter quarterback. George Karloftis. Uh, George Karloftis uh, is from Greece. He moved in here in the eighth grade. His family is from West Lafayette. They're West Lafayette grads. He was living in Greece and actually playing Olympic-level water polo is the only thing he did in Greece. So uh, George comes to us. He just happens to be six foot five, 240 pounds. Uh, he's played football for one year now. Um, he threw shot put for one year, and he, I don't think he quite got our school record, but he made the state finals and finished sixth in the state as a freshman uh, who really hadn't thrown the shot put before and even qualified for the national. So he is a, he's quite a talent. He has, he's a sophomore. Um, he's actually a young sophomore. Uh, he's only 15 years old and won't turn 16 until April. Um, and so, I mean, he's just a kid, and he is, I say he's just a kid, he's 6'5", 240 pounds. Uh, he's already been offered a, a full ride from, from IU. Um, he, he's the first one that I've ever got uh, uh, a letter from. Um, Notre Dame, uh, there's numerous, numerous schools that are highly recruiting George Karloftis and being only a 15-year-old sophomore, he's still got a lot of time. Um, and not just that, he's, he's literally only played football for one year. Uh, so he's learning, um, but his, his raw talent is up there with the best I've seen. So we're very fortunate to have those guys on our football team. Yes? Is there anything you done differently today as it relates to uh, concussions? Do you have different kind of helmets? Uh, uh, are the kids taught uh, differently in the way in which they tackle or so forth? Yeah, there are a ton of things that go into that. Um, they are taught differently how to tackle. Uh, we, we try to completely take the head out of the tackle. Um, USA Football has done a really good job with uh, educating uh, high school football coaches. In, in fact, it's mandated that all high school football coaches and junior high coaches pass the course on tackling safety and concussion safety before you are even allowed to coach. Um, so we all have to take that class. 
and it kind of gives you step-by-step -step procedure on, on how to teach it. Um, and then the, the biggest thing, and this is kind of uh, program by program, but the number of hits uh, a kid takes over the course of time has uh, significantly decreased. We're only allowed to practice twice a week with pads on. Um, and you know, when I was in high school, you practiced every day with your, all your pads on, and you tackled, and you tackled, and you tackled. Uh, how many ever practices we have at West Lafayette for the entire season? We tackle, live tackling, we tackle twice during the entire football season. Uh, we do it on the fourth day of practice when we're allowed to go full pads and we're allowed to do that, and we do it for our inner squad scrimmage. Those are the only two days at West Lafayette that we full tackle. Everything else is done on pads. Um, it's done on air dummies, uh, which are a great invention. Um, they move. Uh, they're filled with air. They're, they look like a human, um, but they're safe. Uh, so practice is a lot different, and yes, we have to go through the, the classes and things to, to make sure the head is staying out of the tackle. <laughs> Had one over here. Yeah, I was wondering, do you work more with the seventh and eighth graders, and you have a program that brings them along? Yeah, great question. Um, so we have a, a flag football program that goes K through three. Uh, we have a youth football program that is third through sixth. Then our junior high is seventh and eighth. Um, our program is identical from the junior high level to the high school level as far as. Uh, scheme, technique, assignment, alignment, positions. If, if we're down at the high school on a Monday um, because we do film and we lift down there, I go out onto the junior high field and I could call a 7th grade offense, an 8th grade offense, a 7th grade defense, or an 8th grade defense and come over, get them in a formation, call a play, and they would do exactly what the high school team does. So the transition from, from junior high to high school is much easier nowadays. It's not There's not a big learning curve. They know what they're doing. They just get bigger, faster, stronger, and they're able to do it better. Um, and then from junior high down to the youth, uh, youth is a little limited. Uh, the skill set is it's tough. I mean, those guys running around, the pads look bigger than them sometimes, uh, but they do what they can. They do a lot uh, of what we do on offense and defense at the youth level as well, especially in the fifth and sixth grade. Yes? Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, we've done that study, I think, for five or six years now. Um, there are three uh, doctors and engineers. They formed this group, um, and they put sensors on our kids so they can track the hits uh, throughout the season. Um, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a, a study where hey, this kid got hit, you got to take him out of the game. That's for our medical professionals. They're, they're recording that data in an effort, I think, what they're trying to come up with is to make the game safer. They're also trying to come up with some helmet technology, which I think they're close on, um, that, that's going to help the game. Um, but it, it, it is comforting knowing, uh, and our kids, um, when they go through that study, uh, they get paid, they get tested. Um, because they're research material, they get paid for certain things, so the kids like it. Um, it is interesting. You know, I haven't seen all the results from the test, um, but they have said out of all the teams that they've tested, uh, they like that our contact level, we don't get a lot of registering because, you know, we only play nine football games in the regular season. And like I said, we only tackle each other twice the whole year in practice. So the results they're seeing with our football are pretty good. Got one more time for one more question. Then we got to get him back to teaching. Yes, sir. Oh, do I have to go? <laughs> I've lived in Unity over 50, 50 years, and I've always admired West Lafayette uh, sports for being such a small school. You always seem to have quality people. Yeah, and, and you know, the school I came from where I graduated was the exact same size as West Lafayette. However, um, it was more of a farming community, a rural setting where you know, kids are involved in things, but normally it's at home, got to go to work, got to go farm, things like that. At West Lafayette, the kids are right here around the school, and they are just involved in everything. And with Purdue being such a close neighbor, um, these kids are involved, they're motivated, they want to do their best at, at like I said, whatever they're doing. Um, so yeah, if they go out for the team, uh, I mean, they're going to put everything they can in, into being the best they possibly can be. And, and the work that goes in, especially the fall sports, I, kn I know every sport puts a lot of work in, but if you think about it, our football season actually starts June 1st, and we don't play a game until August 20th. Um, so the lead up we have with them in the football season, and I love that. I love the way it sits. Um, 
they put a lot of time and effort into being the best they possibly can be. I think kind of their theory is if you're going to do it, let's do it. You know, they, they're not just dabbling in this or that. They, they want to be the best they can be. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hope to be back someday. Coach, is a small token of our appreciation, uh, we thank you again for, uh, in addition to lunch, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next Friday, it'll be a great show for five bucks. Are we 7.30 kickoff still for seven, sectional? It'll be 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock kickoff uh, against a, a great team from Tipton. Um, it'll be, again, for five bucks, you can't beat the entertainment right over here at the complex near the playground. So. Make sure if you're not doing anything that night, come on out and cheer on the West Side football team. Again, thanks, Coach, and uh, I'll turn it over.